In this video, we're going to take a look at the creation of datum planes in Creo Parametric. Datum planes are most commonly used to sketch new features, but they can also be used inside of other feature commands, such as terminating an extrusion at a datum plane. Let's take a look at several different ways to create datum planes. The first method we'll look at is selecting two edges or two axes. So here I have a part and you can see in addition to several edges, I also have a couple of axes that have been created in here. I will simply select my plane tool, select one axis, hold control and select the other axis, click OK. And now you can see that I have a datum running vertically through here, intersecting with these two axes. This works with edges as well. So once again, I'll select my plane tool. I'll select the part edge on this side rotate around, hold control, and select the opposite one. Click OK. And once again, you can see the datum plane running through the middle of this part now through those two edges. Another method for creating datum planes is selecting three points. The points can either be datum points or they can be vertices of a part. I'll select the plane tool, select a vertex, hold control, select another vertex, and then finally, while holding control, select a third vertex or datum point, then click OK. Now you can see that I've created a datum plane running through those three corners of this part. The next method we'll look at is offsetting a datum plane. This works great if, for example, you wanted to come up a few inches above a part and create a sketch and extrude it into the part, as well as various other reasons. For this, it's pretty simple. You just select the plane tool, then you select the surface you would like to offset from. Then you can specify the translation distance. So let's say I wanted this one to come up two inches. Now you can see that I've created a datum plane two inches above this part. Of course, I can go into a part as well. So if I select the side plane here, if I wanted it to go into the part, I would just simply switch it to a negative value to get it to offset into the part. The next method that we'll take a look at that's super useful is the mid plane option. Often you might find yourself wanting a plane in the middle of your part. One way this could be done is with an offset plane, but I always want you to think about your design intent. Is the intent of the plane to be a certain distance off of one side, or is it to always be in the middle? Let me show you what I mean. This part is 10 inches wide. I can create an offset plane five inches into the part, and that is going to be right in the middle of the part. But what if there's a design change to the original sketch? What if I edit this original sketch and instead of being 10, it is now 15. As you can see, that datum plane is no longer in the middle of the part. So the offset plane isn't a good choice for this situation. I'm going to go ahead and delete this plane, and this time I'll select the plane tool. I'll select the plane over here on this side, then I'm going to hold control and select the plane on the opposite side. And it will now create a plane centered right between those two surfaces. Once again, this is more preferable because if there is a change, let's say I went back to 10 inches, you can see that that plane stays in the middle of the part. Next, we'll take a look at a couple of options that relate to cylindrical features. First, I'm going to create a datum plane that runs through the center of a cylindrical shape and goes through an edge or an axis. I'll select the plane tool. I'll select the curved surface. As you can see in my dialog box, it says that this plane is going to go through in this case, meaning it's going to go through the center of the axis. I will hold control and select an edge or axis, then click OK. And now you can see that I have a plane that runs through the center of the cylindrical surface and goes through an edge. Let's say instead that I wanted to create a datum plane tangent to a surface instead. I'll select the plane tool. I'll once again start by clicking on the curved surface. Then in the dialog box, instead of through, I will select the drop down and change this to tangent. Then I will hold control and I will select a surface that I either want this to be parallel to or perpendicular to. So I will hold control and select this top plane. As you can see by default, 
it's set to normal, meaning it's going to create a plane tangent to this cylinder and perpendicular to the surface I selected. If instead I wanted it to be parallel, so it's down here on the bottom, I will just click this second drop down and select parallel. And I've now created a datum plane tangent to the cylindrical surface and parallel to another surface. Finally, we'll take a look at how we can create a datum plane at an angle to another surface. For this method, I will once again start with the plane tool. Then I will select a plane that I want to start with. And then I'm going to hold control and click on an axis or an edge that will act as the rotation center. So here you can see it's starting from that top plane and then it's rotating around this axis. I can adjust my values. As you can see, 30 degrees gets me closer or if I want it to be up a little higher, I can go 60. Or if I wanted to go into the part, I can even put in a negative value such as negative 20 degrees so that it rotates into the part. Once again, I can flip that back the other direction and have it go up. Now I've got a new datum that I can sketch on and extrude into the rest of the part. That concludes this look at creating datum planes in Creo Parametric.